Hello everybody and welcome to this video. I'm Jack Butler. This is Clayton Olson. And we're talking to you about the very serious topic today mm. of how not to date your mum. Techniques um, not to do when dating your mum, right? Well, f <laughs> 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 the point is, uh, we're actually trying not to date our mum. Trying so not to date yeah, your mum, yeah, got yeah, it, okay. It, yeah. And when you say not date your mum, yeah. you mean trying not to pick a partner that is the same archetype, the same type of pattern, the same type of personality as uh, as a parent. Yes, unconsciously. Unconsciously. Yes. If you're right. consciously choosing to do that, mm -hmm. or if you find someone that has a sort of similar way of being than your mom, and that sort of genuinely works, mm. all the power to you. Mm -hmm. And when you say but, that generally works, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, like you're yeah. in a healthy relationship, you're in a conscious yeah. relationship, you're growing together, mm. you're... you're weakening patterns that are limiting your consciousness you know how to co-regulate it's loving mm -hmm. you're not in super trigger and counter trigger patterns all the time like you have a healthy right. thriving relationship like your parents and your mom gave you a good blueprint of what a healthy relationship looks like and you are now using that right yeah yeah or even somehow even if they didn't but there's a way that you found someone that's kind of like a parent and mm. objectively we could mm -hmm. say it's working for you yes great what I'm distinguishing is that for a lot of us, mm -hmm. the pattern of, of dating your mum is an unconscious pattern yes. that doesn't serve us. Right. It's an unconscious pattern that we are maybe continually attracted to, dating, and then fall in love with. Right. Yeah. Get infatuated with. And, and then, have the same result, the same negative result happen over and over again. Right. Which is typically up. the relationship isn't working yeah. or there's a particular dynamic that comes that we can't kind of surmount. Mm -hmm. That's who this video is targeted at. Gotcha. Gotcha. Beautiful. So um, let's open it up with um, why does this happen? Why why do we end up dating our mom unconsciously? How does that uh, even come into being? Yes. Well, it's a pretty deep question. Mm -hmm. I think part of it is that the, the programming that we experience in childhood is really kind of hardwired into us or burned mm -hmm. into us. And so there are these patterns that we aren't conscious to that are sort of back there. Yeah. And then we we recreate in the world. So it's like someone mm -hmm. does a certain thing that has you feel that way that, you know, you felt very bonded or loved with your mom early in life, or maybe you didn't. Yeah. But that those early caregiver patterns are so profound yeah. that when life shows up with something similar, there's like a, there's a boom, there's intensity. If you're in right. a room and you look across and you see someone and you're like, hmm, like, wow, mm -hmm. hot, this could be on. There's a, like an instant yeah. chemistry. That's a place to slow down yeah. and just notice, could this be an unconscious attraction? Could this be an attraction to a type, an archetype or a type that's mm -hmm. similar than my mom? Yes, yes. And uh, to that point, um, Carl from NLP Marin uh, taught that th this model called love equals, which yes. is essentially that when you are growing up, when you're a child, you uh, are operating under the presupposition that no matter what your parents do to you, they love you. Right. So whatever they do, you interpret as love equals that. So if they punished you, yes. if they abandoned you, if yes. they um, were, let's say, just smothering, yes. you will then later on in life not for it. Yeah, be looking for that specific type of pattern, whatever love equals, otherwise you won't actually feel love. Yes. And if you're not conscious of it, this is how people get into abusive relationships. This yes. is how people get into relationships where they're consistently feeling dominated or where they are dominating somebody is because yes. that is what their model of love is. And if the other person doesn't do it, doesn't dominate them, shame them, um, make them angry or play a victim role, then we feel like something's missing. Yes. Yeah. 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 This is where I want to put a little plug for people learning human typing systems because mm. I feel like there's so much power in them. And I can look at uh, women I dated, I can look at the women I partnered with, mm -hmm. and I can see through the lens of a, of a typing system, wow, they all, even though they look so different on the surface, their interests, mm -hmm. their intellect, yeah. their way of being in the world, it seemed different that underneath it, they're all the same archetype, which mm. say in like the higher alignment system, which is one typing system, yeah. is the priest. Mm or the priestess, yeah. that's the archetype that my mom has. And so even though my mom might be way different than how they show up, yeah. there's actually something fundamentally about the quality of, of, 
of who that person is that's similar. That's the kind of scary thing. Yeah. When I talk about unconscious attraction, that you can just be hitting the same attraction pattern, even yep. though you're like, you know, and I'm talking about women from different countries. Yeah. You know, I'm talking Wild. about Brits, Americans, yep. Bulgarians, like, yeah. you know, like You've been seemingly all, a lot of cultural diversity. Yeah. Steady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, global diversity, but similar patterning, yeah. you know? Yeah. And how long did it take for you to discover that this was the same archetype amongst all these different cultural backgrounds? Like, is it something you were aware of immediately? Or is it something that suddenly... Uh, retrospectively. You, retrospectively, yeah. right. So, I mean, you were in it unconsciously, and then yeah. there's like almost this waking up that occurs within the relationship or thereafter wondering why it failed, correct? Right, yeah. And, and being surprised when someone who had more acuity in that typing system could point out the similarities in these people that I hadn't been able to see. And, and so just to maybe flesh that out a little bit, so yeah, people please. To, yep. part, part of that similarity could be um, the sort of common emotional pattern of being with that person, right? Mm -hmm. So is the person guarded mm -hmm. or is the person open? Yeah. Um, is the person introverted? Is the person extroverted? Um, what's their defensive style? Mm. So is it someone who if they feel defended, they're going to come at you? In yeah. what we could call like a dynamic or masculine style? Mm. Or is it someone who's more likely to withdraw mm -hmm. in a more feminine style? Mm -hmm. And that those sorts of things, those sorts of patterns and defenses yes. are some of the correlates that go across. I'm not talking about, yeah. you know, oh, my mom's interested in skiing and my partner likes skiing. Right. I'm not talking about that. That's like the outfit or right? yeah. it's not the actual core. Yeah. yeah. I'm talking about the dominant ways that we show up with reality. Yeah. Yeah. And what's really fascinating about this is that what it comes down to is the reason we're also picking that person is because it's it's something there's something so familiar about it and it's comfortable yes. that we know how to play that game yes right we know how to play the role of whatever the reciprocal is in that because we've been doing it our entire life yes and even though it may lead to a miserable relationship even though it may lead to breakup after breakup, at least we have some sense of certainty in that role, knowing how the game is going to unfold. Yes. Because the, uh, the prospect of being in something that's completely unfamiliar is, can be terrifying. Yes. Right? You'd be like, wow, I, I, don't, I don't know who I am anymore in this. I don't yes. even, how, how, should I, how should I be right now? We're being dealt a, a brand new um, set of cards. Yes. Yeah. So how would, given that we're starting to unwrap and see the um just the, the bigger picture of this how does somebody go from perhaps being in an unconscious pattern of dating their mom the archetype of their mom over and over again uh to experiencing something new that maybe has uh the, the chance of really lasting and getting to levels of love that are deeper than just the the program that you got as a as a child yes we could distinguish between conscious and unconscious attraction. Okay. So if unconscious attraction is the pattern of, of, of your mom, yeah. conscious attraction is, is, it's almost choosing to be attracted to someone or choosing to allow a period of time where that attraction might grow. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it, it, will, it will be a relationship that has a different quality or feel to it than the way that you've normally known relationship. Okay. And it might feel slow. Yeah. It might feel a little boring. Interesting. Because that unconscious attraction has a lot of intensity. If I look across mm -hmm. the room and I'm mm -hmm. like, boom, pattern match for my mom, I don't even know that yeah. unconsciously. Yeah. Then there's a thing where it's like, wow, this is kind of on. And I may be like, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a whole unconscious attraction, sexual attraction, infatuation that yeah. could happen. Yeah. So if it's like, huh, this person's kind of interesting, but maybe it's not like, a super intense thing off the bat right if something's too intense off the bat it might be like you've got some lessons to learn mm. typically that's not going to be the kind of relationship mm -hmm. that's going to last time typically yeah. i'm talking in gross generalizations yeah so in the spiritual realm sometimes those are referred to as like soul contracts right right somebody that you have a soul contract with where you're um you're meant you're destined to yes. work something out within yourself and find some sense of healing maybe you're not supposed to stay with that person yes but they are a gateway to like a, a yeah. yeah higher level of consciousness yeah. for yourself definitely being more consciously attracted is actually being more present and sober mm -hmm. to what is really here and what is the quality of our relating, what mm. is the quality of our soul connection, our heart mm -hmm. connection, who am I with this person, are we helping each other wake up? Mm -hmm. Like they're like that's a different mm -hmm. set of questions than kind of mm -hmm. like is it yummy? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like right, does it feel good? Right, because that can right. be a, a terrible compass. Right, just going off of your feelings. Does this feel good? Because it's sometimes in, within this paradigm, it's almost like you can't trust your feelings right away. Right. Right? There's, there has to be this, um, this like prefrontal cortex that comes out and asks the hard questions about whether you should really be in this pattern or right. be with this person. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it may be taking a, a, a period of time to allow your feelings. Mm. What we basically Perfect. know, yes. right? I love when you, that. When you yeah. fall in love, mm-hmm. you're insane. Yeah, right. Right. Absolutely. So not logical. You're not yeah. going to be seeing things clearly. Yep. And when you fall in love, you typically fall in love with yourself, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Or you fall in love with some kind of opposite of yourself. Mm. You know? Yeah. So there's a kind of there's an irrationality in that. There's yeah. a total beauty with it. I mean, Absolutely. great. If you haven't fallen in love, go fall in love. I mean, that's mm-hmm. such a human experience. Yeah. But. Uh, you know, M. Scott Peck, Road Less Traveled, is actually up there on the bookshelf. Uh-huh. You know, he's distinguishing between love as a uh, love as an act, um, love as like a noun, and love as a verb. Like he's really going into the doing side of loving someone, uh. which is not just about an infatuation mm-hmm. or some kind of mutual fantasy and feeling. Oh, it's so good. It's yeah. more about can I continue to practice being present with you and loving you even yes. in the places where I find you difficult. Got it. What I love about that is it sounds like it's taking love from something that is a feeling that you have no control over. Yes. Uh, and that you're almost like a victim to, right? right. It, it can be yes. beautiful. It can be beautiful yes. to, to be a victim of love. Yeah. of love. Right. To suddenly, you know, what happens when that wears off? What happens when yes. the oxytocin isn't yes. pumping through your brain at that point? Can you still choose to love somebody? Can yes. you still choose and create love through it becoming an action or a verb? Totally. Which is what I'm hearing too. It Getting out of this patterning of dating your mother or an yes. archetype of your parent is being ready to step into the role of going from love as a noun to love as a verb. Right. Right. And being able to start choosing because that's, yeah. that's going to be the work. Loving. Right. Conscious yeah. loving. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm hearing you say is the uh, the first, or maybe this was two tips, but to take things slow, and to be aware of what's actually happening. Right. When you see somebody across the room, um, notice what's happening in your body. Yes. Notice like what types of physiological reactions you're having, even just being on a date with somebody. Um, and maybe the second part then is to go into these uh, relationships with people. Um, with your eyes wide open and almost take the dating phase in slow motion yes. with perhaps clear communication that that is the intention of what you're doing. Yes. Right? And you were mentioning something off camera that I think is important to talk to about the, the friend zone. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. This is particularly for guys, right? Yeah. Uh, that some guys have a challenge getting out of the friend zone, right? Right. So they become like a good mate or the best mate of a woman mm-hmm. and they actually want something more intimate but they're kind of held out in this friend zone. Yeah. So what I was saying was, if you're going to take things slowly, Mm -hmm. you may also be want to, you want to be clear with a woman what your intention is. Yes. So I'm taking this slowly and my intention is to get to know you and my Mm. intention in getting to know you Mm -hmm. is to see what the intimate potential is here. Yeah. You know, and it doesn't have to be only that, right? We can always, Mm -hmm. you can always shift tracks. You can be in the kind of, is there something intimate here and decide, you know what? No, we're just going to be friends. Right. That's nothing lost there really. Absolutely. That's a great distinction. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Challenge, if you stay in the friend zone for too long and the woman's like, I don't really know what this guy's intentions Mm -hmm. are. Is he just kind of wanting to like be a friend? Yeah. Then it can sometimes be difficult to make that transition. Yeah. And the woman ends up feeling uh, not safe in that interaction. Right. Right. So she might end up... um, because she's starting to feel vulnerable because she doesn't really know where she stands with you, close down and put you in friend zone yes, simply to protect mechanism. herself. Exactly. Right. Like, I don't know what's going on, what your intentions are. Yes. It doesn't seem like you're really clear and therefore I don't feel like I can open with you. Yes. And I'm going to go ahead and put you in some place that's safe yes. for me to categorize you since you are not, you don't have the clarity or the vision to do that for us. Yes. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So there's some nuances to this. Yes. You know, there's some nuances to slowing down. I think you could also be revealed and vulnerable with a woman and say, look, particularly if you're looking to have a conscious relationship, Mm -hmm. part of being in a conscious relationship is you have to be able to metabolize your previous relationships. Mm. And to some extent, you have to be able to metabolize them with the person you're now getting to know. Mm. Right? Because if I know that you've got all these patterns, isn't that useful information? If I'm trying to help you be more awake, and you're like, I always fall in love with my mom, right? Yeah. And I need to notice if that's happening here. And I'm just another woman in this string of like, failed things Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I actually think being revealed about I'm consciously wanting to take this slow because I've noticed the pattern of being fast and jumping in and getting infatuated Mm -hmm. hasn't really been serving me wow yeah and that takes some vulnerability and yeah but it's leadership um, and it is yes beautiful like wow there's a guy who's actually got some like integrity and got some self-reflection and depth and presence Wow. Yeah. I love it. And I I love that you even use the term to call it leadership because it so is leadership and leadership isn't always about 
uh, being the guy who is um, like getting the praise and who's oh. like the powerful leader. I mean, sometimes it, it actually means saying the things that you don't want to say. Vulnerability. Saying, exactly. Saying the things that are true for you that are yeah. um, socially awkward. Socially awkward. And, right. And might not have any short term value. That, you yes. know, they might not look like they have short term yes. value, but in the long run, they set you up to actually create something great with somebody. Yes. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So is there a, uh, it sounds like we've got two, is there a third one uh, that we were talking about around? Well, we were talking about the hidden complaint. I think that's the, the hidden complaint. One. Yes. Yeah. So please talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So my view on this is that most of us walk around with some kind of hidden complaint mm -hmm. based on the patterning that we have in this instance, specifically with the parent of the opposite sex. Yeah. Right. So there's going to be some kind of pattern or set of beliefs or orientations that mm -hmm. I have to people of the opposite sex. Mm hmm um, based on that early experience. Yeah. And there's probably some kind of complaint in there, which is a bit, could be like, um, uh, w w women don't want to connect with me mm -hmm. or women aren't available with me or women only or, want me for my money. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or, um, uh, it could be men only women want dominate sex. me, you know, or, or women don't see me. Or, mm -hmm. And so I'm saying, there's, if that is a wound, that's yeah. something that we want to go to work on because yeah. otherwise it's going to be continually projected yes. into relationships. And it, you're going to be unconscious, unconsciously filtering the world right. for, for women who match your little wound so right. that you can get to experience it one more time yeah. until you've actually healed it. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why you would unconsciously pick that is because uh, whatever you believe, our, our minds are looking for reasons to reinforce that. Right. Our minds are looking for reasons to prove that the things that we believe about the world do in fact exist yes. because it gives us a sense of safety even if it keeps us stuck. Yes. Yeah, that's the paradox. Yeah, that is the paradox, right? Because it's like you want to be free, you want to have choice in life, but at the same time, you don't want to give up. It might Your unconscious mind and that, uh, that animal part of yourself might not want to give up the safety that you get from being stuck and suddenly moving into a pattern of a thriving relationship. Yes. Yeah. And this is where... It, working with a coach, a therapist, or somebody that can be a guide and hold the mirror up to you is so powerful. Yes. Because you get to experience yourself through an objective lens that can be able to almost see uh, the things that you are too close to see. Yes. You know, I often say that when uh, people are in a situation and they are continually up against a pattern in their life that keeps reoccurring, trying to fix it on your own is like trying to see your own eyeball. Really, it's like trying to. Yes. It's like you're you're trying to do something, but you have no perspective on the issue or the lens. So, yeah. Um, working with a coach, finding somebody that you trust to be your guide, somebody that has uh, even just one step ahead in terms of being able to distinguish where you may be stuck, it can be extremely beneficial. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Cool. So, do you want to close out, or do I close out? I think you close out on this one. I open this one. You open this. You want me to close out? No. No, Can I, I close out on the last one? Yeah, no, I'm happy to close out. I was just clarifying. I did open this one. You did open yeah, this one, yeah. and I think it's just because I, it, otherwise the diatribe that I just went on is going to be way too long. I had to close okay. it out too. Is that cool with you? That's totally cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah no. Cool. <clears throat> so I hope we've given you some good relational food for thought and observation. All of this is in service of you getting to be more yourself in relationship, having more space for a partner to be more themselves. And using relationship as a vehicle for your own conscious development, which I think is one of the highest potentials of relationship yeah. that gets missed in mainstream culture. It's not just about feeling good and being able to pay a mortgage together. It's like mm. relationship, because of its intensity and its intimacy, mm. is one of the best places to, to really work and grow up. I love that. So if you like this video, please like it. If you didn't like this video, please like it. And if uh, you want to give us your questions and comments, please put them below the video and uh, we'll see you on the next one soon. Thanks for being with us. Thanks a lot.